right, thanks everyone. So my name is Arielle Deardorff and I'm the Data Services Librarian at the University of California at San Francisco Library. And today I'm gonna to be sharing some of the findings from a recent project on um, some cultural barriers to reproducibility in the biomedical uh, research lab environment. Oops. So um, this all came from a, a series of workshops that we taught this past fall um, on biomedical reproducibility. And this was an eight part workshop series targeted at biomedical graduate students and postdocs. And it helped satisfy the NIH rigor and reproducibility requirements that many of our other um, speakers have talked about today. So this was a really fun um, thing that we got to do. It was a partnership between our library, our graduate division, and our open science group. And it started with just kind of a general introduction to the topic of reproducibility. You know, what are some of, what are people talking about when they say there's a crisis? Uh, and what are some of the major issues that we see? And then the rest of it was really going in more depth into some of the different uh, methods and tools. So we covered everything from how to make your um, code publicly available, how to publish your data, um, and how to uh, you know, get into things like open protocols. So we got a lot of really great responses from this. People were really excited about the workshop. Um, but throughout the whole series, something kept happening over and over, which is that people would say, hey, this is really great, um, I'm loving this, but I don't think my PI or my lab or my team is gonna go for it. Um, so as you can understand, that was a little bit frustrating. We were like, hey, you know, what are they not gonna go for? Um, so in the very last workshop, we um, had everyone write down one thing that they wanted to make a change to. So one new practice, one new tool, something they wanted to implement um, that they had learned in the series. And then we asked them to identify a barrier to actually implementing that more reproducible practice. So what's gonna get in the way of doing that thing that you just said you wanted to do? And um, so everyone wrote these on little sticky notes. We put them up on the board. We looked at them all. We did some categorization um, and later went through and actually coded them. And so the things that people talked about is, is kind of what I'm calling cultural barriers. So unlike, you know, oh, I just don't know what to do. Um, the key things were, you know, I just don't have time to do this. And I don't really have support from my PIs or my supervisors. Um, people also mentioned things about competing priorities or, you know, I just don't have the money to kind of invest in this kind of work or the infrastructure in terms of maybe the, the repositories that I need. Um, but this was pretty interesting to us. So people said things like, you know, I just don't know, I don't have time to figure out a better strategy to implement these better methods. Or the most common thing was, you know, my PI, my supervisor just wants data, wants results fast. So I don't have time to kind of do all this other work. Or a really interesting thing was, you know, my lab mates will actually judge me for um, spending time on reproducibility instead of spending time on experiments, um, because that's what they think is the, the kind of key, most important piece. Um, so this was really interesting to us because we, we wanted to think about, you know, if, if we're teaching all of these things about reproducibility and then people leave our classroom and they can't actually implement any of it, we're not going to really move the needle at all. Um, so we did some reflecting about how librarians can help kind of maybe reduce some of these barriers. So the first is that we thought it's really important to actually talk about this in your classes. So when you're talking about, you know, solutions, um, you know, you can, you can be upfront and say, hey, you know, maybe your PIs might be resistant to some of these. Or, hey, we understand that um, time, you know, these things do take time, um, but we think it's important to make time for that. You can also, something we did was actually have learners get together and brainstorm solutions to overcoming these barriers. So somebody could say, hey, in my lab, we, you know, I was able to convince my PI because I showed them this influential article, or um, I, you know, tried this new um, technique and it was really effective. Um, and at the same time, we thought it would be great to actually bring in um, perhaps more senior researchers or faculty who can talk about how they have made changes in their own practices or in their own lab, how they set up new systems that help save them time. Um, and this is kind of, you know, speaking to this idea that uh, librarians can, can often tell these stories over and over, but sometimes it doesn't quite make that connection until it's coming from a peer or it's coming from a kind of senior faculty member. And here we just really wanted to emphasize that, you know, taking time for reproducibility is not taking time away from science, it's actually doing your science better. So those are some ideas that we had and we'd love to hear other ideas for kind of overcoming these barriers. Um, I do wanna do a quick shout out to my colleagues, Annalisa Taylor and Liz Silva. Please send me an email if you have any thoughts on this or if you just wanna see more about the workshop, you can find all of our slides at this link. All right, thanks everyone.